so it's time for another little moment, another little nugget of time with our guides. And so in this moment, uh, Renee Goddess, um, who is the founder and lead consultant from Embodied Equity, um, Embodied Equity Consultants, and uh, Nancy Cronin, the executive director of the Maine Developmental Disabilities Council, are the two folks we're going to hear a little bit from. Uh, so Renee and Nancy, I think let's, if we can get them, there they both are. Splendid. So your two core questions in your videos, Renee, yours was, what if we could fully see who we are? And Nancy, yours was, uh, what if everyone, everyone were valued equally? And so I'd love to hear you each thinking, just think for a minute, like thinking out loud um, about, about these what ifs, uh, it, how they, how, how come these what ifs? Um, and is this the what if, is, the, is this the one that we should take into our breakout rooms next time? Or is there another what if that is circling in your mind um, or an angle on your core question? So Renee, I'm gonna go ahead and ping it to you to start. Um, what are you thinking today? Little nugget. Ah, okay. So immediately I'm thinking that that breakout group was great. And thank you for that opportunity. Um, and I'm going to bounce off from what was going on there, which is the space of, um, being an individual in the big world, in the big space. How does this structure manifest change in the larger structure? And then I think some of what was coming up in our group was, how do you balance it all? <laughs> how do you do it? If you're thinking, how do you move? If you're not moving, how do you think? If you, how do you do it all at once? So my original question, if you can see yourself, like what, what would be possible? It still lives in the same place, right? For me, it's about the individual. It starts at home. It starts here. And it's like, what is my personal practice? What is my personal ritual? What are the ways that when I wake up or step out of my bedroom threshold or out of my house threshold, what are the powers I hold that make it possible for me to keep taking a step? I'm thinking that basic and that simple. Yes, tomorrow, yes, yesterday. But right now, how are these thighs being held up by the rest of my knees, by the rest of my ankles? Do they feel like they can do that today? <laughs> Is that what we should be doing? Should we walk through Portland today? Maybe. Maybe we don't walk through Portland today. Really going back to if I am thriving, if I am in the place of feeling successful for whatever that means for me, not what white terrorism has told me, not what white culture parenting has told me, but building what success looks like for me. And right now it's hard. It's a really hard thing choosing myself, but it's been a really fun journey to see that other people are doing it and attaching myself to other people being like, I'm not alone. <laughs> So I really appreciate these questions and these groups because I can see I'm not alone and it's clear we all have these questions. Oh, splendid. Is there a what if you want to pull out of there for us to take with us in a moment and then we'll get we'll do the same. We'll get one from Nancy and we'll take two into our next session. I do. <laughs> I know. Um, what came out of this again and thank you Ian Carr for like bringing it back to Afrofuturism for me also, because that's what's really beating at the heart for me of excitement for this project. But what if Afro Afrofuturism was legally required curriculum in schools? Awesome. What if Afrofuturism was legally required curriculum <laughs> in schools? Lovely. So that's going to be one of our two. Nancy, what are you thinking today? What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking so many things right now. That question really did bring a lot to me. It brought to me um, how, you know, right now in this culture that we live in right now, we're in a very individualistic culture as opposed to a collectivistic culture. And the idea of, and I, I work, I don't work. I, I live, I commune with a lot of people with different amounts of ability. And I look, I see a lot of ableism and I see a lot of devaluing because of people's abilities to whatever label they have. And, and I've often wondered, and my original question is what is, what would it be like if we were all able to be valued 
but I want to take away the equally because that's not it. I want to be valued for each other's gift. Can you imagine a community? Can you imagine a community in which the people that currently are on the fringe were able to be viewed for the gift and put them in the center? Just kind of like a regular pancake of value. So what if the individual on the end was really, really, you know, this is an individual who's elderly and but loves children, and we would be able to connect that person with the, with the mo single mother who needs to go to work or needs to get a mammogram and flip? Or what if the individual with a substance abuse issue was a really good plumber and flip? And what if the individual with a developmental disability also really made people smile or made people think differently? Where is their role? Because I believe that everybody on earth has value and gifts. And when we're only looking at things from the point of view of how much money or how much ability that other people value, we're missing out and we're losing so much talent in each other and in our true community. We would not be separating people or viewing them as fringe if we could identify their gifts. So I don't want people to be valued equally. I want us to recognize what our gifts are. And that may not be a gift that people will pay money for. It may be the gift that everybody else needs. So what if, if we valued and spent our time recognizing each other's gifts? You know, maybe the individual with a developmental disability grows really good zucchini and there's other people who need it. Flip. Flip. Oh, I love that. I love that. Could you say that what if one more time, Nancy? What if everybody was, was valued for their gifts and we spent our time recognizing in ourselves and in our others and in our others what gifts they have as opposed to the monetary stuff? Wonderful. What a great pair of what ifs. So these two questions are the questions to take with you. They're in the chat. We'll broadcast them. Um, so Renee's question again, what if Afrofuturism was legally required curriculum in schools? And what if we spent our, we valued and spent our time recognizing each other's gifts? And we'll see you in another seven minutes.